Hello everyone, and today we had to take a marshrutka to go to this university because it's not located exactly in the city center of St. Petersburg. Uh, well, Graduate School of Management, St. Petersburg State University. And today we talk with Gonzalo, who came all the way from Portugal and who is studying here. So am I right that this is the stop where, from where all the buses go to the uni? Yes, if, uh, even if you don't live in Aftova, you have to come here to get the bus. If you live in the center of the city, which is the case for most, most exchange students, uh -huh. you have to come to Aftova by the red line in the metro, and then you can take the bus. All the buses start here to go to the university. And so it's like anything in the middle from the city center and the uni? Yeah, exactly. So, right? Aftova is in the middle of the two. Uh -huh. It's a good place for an exchange student to stay. Yeah, and you you live not far from here? Yeah, I live I live just around the corner, back there. And it's useful because you can both go out during the weekdays, and it's like 300 rubles, which is four or five euros, a Yandex back home from the clubs. And we can also get just the bus to go to university. And yeah. do you have to wait for long for the bus? Now usually there's there's three buses you can take, and that's not talking about the small ones. Just that's just the big ones. Uh huh. And you take usually, the big ones. Yeah, we usually take the big ones, and it takes like maximum five minutes between each one. Oh, it's good? Yeah, it's good. Okay, let's take one then. Yeah. <laughs> Traffic is usually 45 minutes, I would say it's a good average. Mm -hmm. If you take the one we're taking now, the small ones can take can be way faster because there's less stops, so it can be half an hour, depending on traffic, it can be way more, but half an hour would be if you're in a rush, just take a small one, that's what I'm gonna say. But still it's quite far. Yeah, it's quite far from the city, but I don't think there's anything to do about it. So yeah. because if you want to study at GSM, that's unless you're a master student, which is center of the city, the bachelor campus is quite far, but if you live in Aftava, it doesn't take that long, just get in the bus, maybe do some reading, watch some Netflix, whatever whatever you can do with your time, then you're at university in no time. And what time do classes start? For me, like, and for most exchange students, at least, we don't have that many classes, we have like five, six courses that spread out for all the whole, the whole semester, okay. and we usually start class at 10 in the morning. Ten. Yeah, it's the earliest I've ever started, so... Mm -hmm. Ah, here you mean? Yeah, here, here. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And back home, do you have uni in the city center? Uh, back something? home, actually, my I study at Nova in Portugal, which is near the beach, so a bit outside of Lisbon as well. Mm -hmm. the, back in Portugal, I can take the car. Obviously, I don't have a car in Russia. And we take 20 minutes as well, half an hour, way more depending on traffic as well. But it's, yeah, it's on, it's on the outskirts of the city as well, so I'm kind of used to it in that way. And do you have classes in the city center here? Uh, no, I have no classes in the city center in the last mm -hmm. uh, I, I think the only students who have them are those who are taking the intensive Russian course. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's how it is as far as I know. Mm -hmm. And how many days per week do you have to travel like that? Depending on the weeks and on my willingness to go to classes, <laughs> uh, I'd say four days a week, three days a week. Uh -huh. Some some week, uh, as a university is a bit far, you don't go there to study, you just study at home. Uh -huh. But if you are there, you just stay there studying. So i say uh, three, four days a week, depending on the, on the weekday, I guess. And do you think like, living that far from the city center doesn't let you know the city well? Or no, not at all. Like I mean. It's, it's not the best when you want just to go out and get some dinner and there are those really good restaurants in Rubenstein and Nevsky. I mean, it takes a while to get there, like 40 minutes, and just for dinner, maybe it's not worth it. But in terms of this in the city, you have all the time you want to just organize yourself, just go there. 40 minutes is not that long, 20 minutes if you take the metro. So you can easily visit the whole city and even 
in the surroundings without a problem, even if you're looking after them. And can you compare Portugal and Russia? Uh, Weather-wise, not at all, <laughs> of course. Uh, it's a beautiful, actually today is, it's a nice day, it's not that, that cold, I think. Um, it's not a good, very good thing. I, I was told St. Petersburg is a very rainy city. Thus far, that's not been the case. I've been caught by rain maybe once or twice. Yeah, it hasn't been raining a lot. Uh, yeah, especially because I was told that St. Petersburg is like the capital of rain. It's yeah. raining all the time. And yeah, but they're both different. They both have very good points about each other. I like it here as well. So what was your first reaction? Uh, first reaction, reaction, like the biggest shock it's that most Russian people do not speak English, but usually they need one of the two. They either just speak Russian to you, or they get their phones out and go to Google Translate to try to help them. So, so that technology is helping in that sense. Obviously. And when you look at the worst, it's like when you communicate. The worst. I, I usually get this. Not, it's not the worst. But it's the most common one, at least when I don't have my monthly card for the metro charge. And I have to, like every bus in St. Petersburg has a lady for you to, to pass your card on. And the ladies ask where you're going if you don't have a card. Mm. And usually it's, it's a problem saying where I'm going. But I try to stay one place and then she fix another. And, and like she th thinks the bus doesn't go there. And, like sometimes it's just there's a mix and match there. But it's not really the biggest problem. You can always get through it with your phone. So yeah. just bring your phone, I guess. And do they get annoyed or they're. Yeah, I've never had it. Only, the only case where somebody got annoyed of speaking English, actually, we were in the bus, and the buses here in Russia are really quiet, like, especially compared to Portugal. Like in Portugal, every bus is really crowded, and everybody's on their phone and talking to each other. You know, Russian people just want to go from one place to another, to just sit down on their phones. This bus at night was really quiet, and I was in my roommate cycle, we were talking English to each other, and a lady, like, yelled at us, Gavrit uh, Ruski, or, or something of the sort, which was like, first to speak Russian, and the, but then the other ladies present were like, hey, they don't even speak Russian, so that's why it was okay. But she was just a random woman. Yeah, just a random woman, and never a, never a worker has got angry at me, I think. Maybe they got, but I just don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> if they yell, you don't yeah. know what they yell. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Come back to the moment when you got to know that okay, you're going to Russia, and uh, like when did it happen? When did you get the news? Yeah, okay. Uh, basically, like at Nova, the, when you apply to go to exchange, it's really early compared to other Portuguese universities because they want you to have the time to prepare. Mm -hmm. Especially like for Russia, you need to get a visa, maybe some warm clothes, and everything. So mm -hmm. that's a good. That's good. Actually, I wasn't supposed at first to come to St. Petersburg. I was going to Moscow. Really. Yeah, and then the Ze and I, the other Portuguese guy was here, and then we got moved, like Nova emailed it, like the other university emailed us saying, hey, we are not able to provide for exchange students this semester. I think something happened with some exchange students who didn't behave that well there. And not from Nova, but just the exchange students in general. Yeah. And they just emailed us saying there's no exchange this year, so we're gonna reallocate you to another university. Mm -hmm. And Nova talked to GSM because they're partners, and they, they were like, hey, can you, can you get them please because we need some money to go and we just came here mm -hmm. and coming to Russia like it should I expect it to be more of a, a harder I mean harder I expect it to be harder to get the the visa mm. to get here but it was not a long process I just yeah. had to do the 
just go up if, if you're from Portugal at least if maybe from Europe it's all the same if you're from outside of Europe I don't, I don't really know mm -hmm. but you just have to go online just go to your Russian consulate set a date to go there just go there maybe it's <laughs> it's quite the first Russian experience you get because I got there everything was Russian inside everybody talking Russian and I didn't know anything but I just I uh, just had to give my papers to a guy who didn't speak English nor Portuguese but spoke Russian of course in Lisbon in Lisbon yeah in the consulate how come yeah I, I don't know <laughs> and and I just gave it to him and he was like okay he got it I got, got everything took care of it and he said like pointing at the date he said come back like the 15 days later mm -hmm. you don't have to pay anything for it mm -hmm. because um, because uh, you're coming as a student so you Maybe. don't you don't pay anything for your visa. Mm. The only thing you have to pay for, if you don't have it already, is medical insurance. That you are obliged to have like 30, I think it's 30,000 euros coverage at least, because mm. if something happens to you, you must be covered. So before applying to the visa, make sure you have that, because they won't take your visa in unless you have the medical coverage to, to, I mean, to cover for any, anything that Russia may bring to you. Like this. <laughs> But like, do you choose it yourself or university? The uh, insurance? Yeah. Nah, the university, I mean, at least from Nova, doesn't help you with that, but you just, there are some good, like, uh, Fidelidad is the one I got, it's like a Portuguese brand, which just has specific uh, insurance for exchange students. Mm -hmm. Probably there's one of these in every single country because it's a need. People are going more and more in exchange, so yeah. it's a marketplace to explore for sure. Mm -hmm. And we just, you just say which data you want and it's done. It's, mm -hmm. it's not that that much of a hustle and you're protected if something happens to you when experiencing Russia. Like, so <laughs> in terms of means. bureaucracy before uh, coming Before here. coming here, not that many. Mm -hmm. At arrival a bit, but before coming here I just had to get the, the visa and that was mm -hmm. basically it. And when did you it. have it already? I had it like some months before, uh, a month before coming to Russia. Mm -hmm. I had taken care of it because I wanted to go uh, outside of Lisbon for vacation, so I just took care of it before, uh -huh. but it was no problem at all. Okay, okay. And could you pick up the courses already in advance as well? Uh, the course selection was not the easiest one. I mean, uh, there was a lot of courses available, mm -hmm. and some of them uh, are only available in the semester, in the second semester. So, there are some courses that I wanted to take that are only available in the second semester, and they said just send you a list with all of them. Mm -hmm. But it's no problem because Exchange students have spots for themselves. They, they, you only compete with exchange students when getting a, a spot. So you send your learning agreement at first with the courses you want, you want to take. Okay. But then you actually get your courses when you come here and see, okay, the schedule looks like this and I want to take this and that because yeah. it's better for you. And you only are going to compete with exchange students. So uh, Russian students, like for spots in a class, are not competition. Mm -hmm. just competing amongst each other like this class can have up to 10 exchange students and that's how it is mm -hmm. and we're I don't know how many we are but it's not a problem I could get all the courses I wanted after knowing what courses were available so really so you got everything you wanted yeah at, I mean everything I wanted from the from the time I, I got to know that the courses I wanted at first were not available if that's making any sense mm -hmm. because at first I wanted two courses which it turned out to be available only in the second semester. Yeah. But like, obviously this is the first semester, so they were not available. So I choose chose another two. Mm -hmm. I could get those and the rest of my desired program. Mm -hmm. So that was that was good in that sense. And do you have to compete only with the bachelors or with the masters students? With the bachelor, with a, it's bachelor courses, so you only compete with bachelor students. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, I'm not sure if you can take master courses. I didn't take any, and I, I don't think you can, but if you can do it, or you would compete with master students, of course. But what do you mean compete? Compete in the sense of, uh, of the spots there are. So it's first, first come, first served. There's, let's say, 50 exchange students and 20 spots. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's a variety of courses, so it mostly not a lot of courses are full. So like every exchange student wants to do it. Mm -hmm. Unless it's like a course somebody has served, it's really easy or something. Mm -hmm. But in that sense, like we just there's 20 spots and you just compete with the 50 exchange students. It's not the sense of this class can only have 50 students mm -hmm. and there's 1,000 students at GSM and you all compete for it. Now just there's specific exchange students uh, positions and you compete with those for those. Mm -hmm. 
And so, did you have a person from JSON who was uh, like your coordinator okay. or something? Yes, uh, we all coordinator. yes we all get buddies assigned to us. Uh, some of them, my buddy was really useful, uh, Katrina, and uh, Katrina as well. And <laughs> as okay. as most girls in Russia. <laughs> and and she was really useful because once upon uh, upon arrival, there's a lot of bureaucracy to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. That is not easy to take care of, especially if you don't speak Russian, because it involves going, especially if you're staying in the dorms. You have to go to the dorms, then go somewhere else to be registered there, and then go pay somewhere, and then go back to show that you're there. And you just have to go to four or five different places, and also to the master building, which is, uh, as we previously discussed, the center of the city, so like one and a half hours away from here, two hours away from the dorms. So it's just a mismatch, and if you have no one to guide you, first arrival, it's probably impossible to take care of everything. Mm -hmm. I heard of one guy who tried it, he failed. If <laughs> <laughs> like he didn't have a passport and then like, registration went wrong, so it's really good that Jason gives you uh, a student to help you. I'm, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's Jason or if it's uh, like students union or something. They kind of work together. Kind of work together, as far as I, yeah, as far as I know as well. They just assign you someone and even. If you don't have a specific someone for you, somebody will pick you up and help you with the process because like the, there's a buddy team and if a buddy can make it, someone else, somebody else will make up for, for her or for him. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's good because you really need that help in the first couple of days. Um, okay. But like, uh, I meant actually person from the university, like some kind of coordinator uh, some, who was talked to you before. Uh, yeah, there's uh, Katrina as well, <laughs> who, is, <laughs> who like talks, uh, explain to us everything we need, like send us the list with all, all the things we need to take care of, like to be sure we have everything checked out, the course selection, everything, it was all from her. So she, I think she's like the international student coordinator. Uh -huh. And she was really helpful in the sense of taking care of any doubts we could have. Sometimes you just don't know about this, like where about my visa ends at this date and whatever. And she would just explain it all very clearly to us and that was really nice. So in that sense you were satisfied? Yeah, in that sense, my, yeah, with the uni and also with the help we got, like she was really responsive and really fast doing that. Always did whatever she could to help us. For instance, for you to get the visa extension faster, you can send a photo of your passport to her and she will already submit it and then you just have to get the actual passport to get it in a way that it's faster. And she was like, we can, I can do this for you. I, I didn't even ask you, like, I can do this for you. Just send it, this and that. So it's really helpful. And what is this visa extension? Uh, the visa extension, like, when you come to Russia, you are only allowed to stay here for, I think it's 90 days. I'm not entirely sure, but it's not enough for the whole semester, for, the whole for sure. And then, once you're here, you can apply for a visa extension, usually multiple entries, so you can go travel, let's, let's say, as you're in St. Petersburg, to Estonia or Finland, or like the, neighborhood countries and outside of the city as well so you need the visa extension to do that you need your passport to be renewed uh, your visa to be renewed in your passport so that when you go outside of the country you have no problem getting back in and how does it work actually so so your it's actually more bureaucracy <laughs> uh, which is kind of a trend here but <laughs> you have uh, these papers registering that you're living uh, especially for us that we live in an apartment we have this uh, this paper small paper that our landlord takes care of and it says that we came here at this day and we are staying until that day. I think it's in Russian, so I don't really understand fully what's there, but I think it's that. Once you go out of the country, you come back, you'll get a new migration card, which is this very small paper that you get in the airport every time you come in. Yep. And once you have a new migration card, you have to submit again to the landlord and you'll have to get you a new paper. Unless you're going out in and out of the country in a short period of time, so like three days, there's no point in just getting another one, getting another one. You can wait for it. But if you're just doing like a trip per month, you always have to get it when you come back. You get a new migration card and you're not legal, legally stabilized in your home and unless you have the paper mm -hmm. from your landlord. So, um, just as far as I know, like you come here and then when you apply for the multiple entry, multiple entry EVs? Yeah, we only apply here. For the, like we have to come into Russia, and then she took care of everything for us. And when? Just, uh, we applied quite late, but just because we were late it, because we we're busy with other stuff. But you have like one or two months to apply. You have to apply before that date, otherwise you'll have to go out of Russia, wait for a new one, and come back in. So 
be fast doing that and of course be fast because you will be able to travel faster as well mm-hmm. and, but you just once you get here you can immediately go for it if you want to mm-hmm. uh, it will take like two weeks that you are without your passport two weeks yeah one week two or weeks. So it's two months no, it's without your passport yeah depending because she took care of that thing to be faster really so some people was like one week two weeks some people was one month it's really depending on previous mm-hmm what you previously made to get the passport mm-hmm. but yeah I guess the month would be the, the average but some people got it way faster mm-hmm. maybe they were lucky with the batches or something mm-hmm. not sure uh, but it's you'll be without a passport so you can't leave the country and you can't leave the city as well or the, or the Leningrad region I think that's if I'm so correct. you even cannot travel you cannot travel outside of Leningrad I, I think yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so so be, be sure that you don't have any booked tra- tra- travels for that, that period, but it should go by fast and you just can travel again. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's this cafeteria here where you can get a quick snack, a coffee, and whatever you want, just, to, just between, between, between classes or something. And there's also the main dining area, which is in another building next to us, where you just get a proper meal and have a lunch. Different bikes, so you have to go outside, you walk to it, like, yeah, put the jacket back on, <laughs> and you go walk, it's like about five minutes walk to that building, and there you can have a proper lunch and stuff. Just, like, here you can also have lunch, I guess, if you just eat a salad and a sandwich, if you want like warm, you know, rice, beef, let's say. Do you eat there? Uh, because I only have usually one class per day. So I just take a nice little bowl, or if you have a nice afternoon, I can have lunch before coming to the restaurant with the need of having somewhere to lunch with lunch. Uh, do you cook at home? Yes, we cook at home. I usually cook for all the guys. Uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, Tim, Tim and I, uh, Tim is another way. We're mainly like, we organize ourselves in that way, like, we have two cooks cook for everyone, and the other guys go to the and just organize ourselves. Yeah, there's, there's always something that you that you'll like for sure. You know the variety. Now is you And so let's come back to the moment when you came here. You said like your body was uh, helpful and stuff. Um, but basically, like, what were your expectations and what was the reality at that period? For my body or for no, for Russia in general. For Russia, uh, I don't know. I. I I tried not to have a lot of expectations, not to be disappointed or not to be surprised, like just to be neutral of coming here and enjoy whatever whatever it brings. <laughs> and yeah, I think I expected it to be really bureaucratic, a lot of bureaucracy, which was the case. So <laughs> that was one of my expe- not expectations, but uh, predictions. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I don't know, I don't know why, but I had that, but it, it turned out to be true. And but uh, also. I don't know why, maybe it's because I'm from Portugal, I expected the weather here to be immediately cold, which was not the case, which was really nice outside, you could meet, uh, get to know the city very well, so that was mm-hmm. really nice. Mm-hmm. And in terms of uh, the language and the culture in general? Uh, okay, the language was a bit of a barrier, because not a lot of people speak English. Do you speak I'm, about Russian? Or do I speak Russian? No. <laughs> I do not speak Russian. Uh, I, I got a crash course a crash course that GSIM offers, which was really helpful because you learn how to read and it's not a, that hard to read. Not that you will understand every word, but you know the, the new alphabet you have to learn if you are from a non a Cyrillic, Cyrillic country. Yeah. yeah. So that's really helpful in that sense. You just get some words, get the basics, get the, get the passives, get, the, get, the, get what you need for a daily basis. If you want to take another course, GSM also offers an intensive Russian course. For free? Uh, yes, it's included in the, one of the courses you can take That's nice. for ECTs. Uh, if your own university agrees with it, of course. And you can you can take that. Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, yeah, yeah like whether the language barrier was... Yeah, the language barrier was, was quite, quite a toll, I think, at first, because I expected more people to speak English here. Mm. Especially at restaurants, you see a lot of... Uh, Young people, are, I mean, like usually older people, are not that well educated in terms of English. But that's just generally speaking. Back in Portugal, it's the same. 
but usually especially the younger generation to be able to speak English better because we are all being prepared for a more global world. But I just turned out that even in restaurants sometimes the employees don't speak English, which came to me as quite of a surprise. Mm -hmm. But you can always have the translator at hand, so it, it's not that much of a stop. And people, if they want to, if they want to help you, they will, they will really help you. Mm -hmm. So if they don't, they'll just speak Russian to you. And, but you, you can get something and you try to understand them. Uh, but like, for instance, when we got our, it was really funny because we had to, we had to go get our, your metro, our metro cards, mm -hmm. uh, the, the student ones, that is. And the lady didn't speak a word of English. So pretty much what happened was that this, this lady at the counter was trying to help us, but she didn't speak English. And we were just trying to get the student metro card. And she was like trying. And she got her friends to help also didn't speak English and then that worker got another word and at some point it was like four workers just trying to understand what we were trying to say and trying to help us which is which is really nice like we, we made it a big line behind us so people were not that happy to at us okay with us but but they were really trying to help us even though they didn't speak English they really wanted us to get the car and we eventually got them so which metro station was it it was in after the metro station which is the one I live in but you can, I think you can take care of it in any metro station, you just have to go to the counter and, and ask me. And, okay, so you live at after the metro station? Yes. Uh, and you yeah, and uh, can you explain me a bit about the process of uh, getting an apartment or like um, dorms here? So, so uh, at first, like what my all my friends said was like, go to the dorms, like all my friends, like, Diogo was the guy who came here last year from Portugal, mm -hmm. he said, if you want to just go to the dorms and then you'll find a place because mm -hmm. the dorms are outside of the city like GSIM is outside of the city dorms are even more on the outside of the city so we're quite it's I think it's half an hour from here so one half hours two hours from the center which is not ideal especially if you want to go out go have dinner and some whatnot dorms are really cheap but I just don't think it's it's, it's value for money in the sense that it's, you just don't get the full experience of St. Petersburg in Russia if you just are living just uh, dorms, university dorms, university, right? there's more to it. And it's better to live near the center for, for that. And, and yeah, I think, so. I, think, I think that the process of getting an apartment uh, at first didn't seem that, that easy because every time you looked online, everything that was pop uh, popping up was like booking and Airbnb. Which usually are for shorter stays. I mean, it can be for longer, of course, but usually are for shorter stays. And if you want somewhere to live in, you need to have a landlord that takes care of your papers. You need a lot of stuff, a lot of bureaucracies to be taken care of. And we we got our apartment for two years. Like some other exchange students said, and there's this platform. There's a lot of apartments there. Just go check and go text them saying where you want to live, and maybe you will get lucky. And we got we we got an apartment. And so, um, if we come back to the dorms, like, are they okay? So, if, for example, you don't have the budget. Uh, yeah, the dorms. I mean, they're they're not awful. Uh, you share a room with either one or two people. But you, the thing is, like, usually most Russian students uh, live in the dorms for four or five years, like their study period, and that that usually is, means that they are really at home. So they'll bring in a fridge, they'll bring in some stuff that's helpful and they may, might share it with you. They might, yeah, you can use a fridge, you can use everything, but you don't have a, you don't have a kitchen in, inside your room. So you have to always cook outside and clean. I don't know, I, I couldn't imagine myself living there, but it's, it's, okay, it's okay for the for first three to five days when you're trying to get an apartment. Mm -hmm. And you just, there's no point in getting an Airbnb or something. Just go to the room, it's easier to take care of the bureaucracy there because everything is preset for that. Mm -hmm. Just take care of that and when you find an apartment, you just move on. Mm -hmm. And is there a thing that, uh, for example, you didn't know before coming and now you would share it with other exchange students? Is there a thing? <coughs> Let me think about it. Uh, I think I would share with other students. I don't know, maybe just be ready to for the culture barrier, just make sure you maybe learn something before. Like, I don't know if it's possible to take classes back in back in Portugal. Of course it is. You just have to find someone Russian that's willing to teach you. Uh, 
maybe get, get to know something, some things like that to avoid coming in with being this massive career at first. But I, I don't think there's like a, a secret to, to coming to Russia. But what kind of barrier are you talking about? Yeah, the lang language, language barrier. The language. Yeah. Which is, as we discussed previously, which is quite uh, impactful, like the first time you come, and even the bureaucracy centers, which I, I would expect them to speak English because we did take care of a lot of exchange students. Even the ladies there don't speak it. So, mm -hmm. luckily, you have a buddy to take care of that for you. Or maybe it's good that you know some things about Russia and Russian culture mm -hmm. that, that could be helpful for you. And is it different for you, like the university atmosphere and the rest of St. Petersburg that you see there? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. I think it's quite similar. I mean, university is always cozier in the sense like everybody studies and everybody's doing the same thing. So, you just are, you're all in the same boat in that sense. Like, you're all trying to study and get good grades. When you're in an other city, like, people are just doing their own stuff. But I don't think there's that much of a, of a cultural difference or, I don't know, a willingness to, to be happy from the university to be safe and smart. I think it's the same. In terms of the language? In terms of language, of course, like in, uh, in the university, most people speak English because there's a lot of courses in English and it's, it's, uh, there's the international uh, course, so of course you have to speak English for an international course. So I think, of course, there's not that much of a barrier here, but still, like the ladies at the counter of the, of the coffee shop, they don't speak English as well. But they understand what you're trying to get, so I've always been able to get my coffee. <laughs> And why actually people from Portugal come here? Do you think so? uh, what I think so. Uh, what a big thing that motivated me to come to Russia was the was the different. I, I just wanted something different. I wanted to get. I know uh, geographically speaking, Saint Petersburg is inside of Europe, but it's like I wanted something outside of Europe in the sense of cultural wise, like something really different from Portugal. I would never go to Spain or France because it's really similar, really close by. I just wanted to go out. So I just put some selections outside and I ended up in St. Petersburg and I've been having fun, it's really nice here. So I, I think it's, it's for, the, for the different, for the challenging yourself in a sense. Mm. Getting outside of your comfort zone, it's a really good city to do that. Uh, not only because of the language, but like, there are other factors? Yeah, there, of course, like your, the language of course is a factor, but you're in a foreign city, in a foreign country by, by yourself mainly because you're not with your family. Of course, I'm getting a lot of friends and you know, everything, but you're basically alone in that sense. Mm -hmm. So it's really good, like it's a growth opportunity coming to another country to get another different culture, different language, different ways of being. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really good for you to challenge yourself in that way. Mm -hmm. It's gonna take five to ten minutes for another one, and you, maybe it's not worth the wait. But if you're here and you just see it go, there's no point in rushing because in two minutes, Matt, another one will come. So that's really good. The city is well prepared. And another thing, uh, which a lot of people told me about before coming here, is that it's really well prepared for the cold as well. When you're outside, you have your jackets on, but you come inside and just stay in your t-shirt, t-shirt or your sweatshirt. And you're super fine because everything is ready for the cold weather. So, Really good here. For example, with your apartment, you rented an apartment, right? Yes, I rented an apartment with three Dutch guys, and it's really nice. It's really, yeah, it's a really nice apartment, and we are never cold. We there's a, a heating system, like centralized, which always keeps the house at a good, at a good temperature, uh -huh. and then you have extra heaters if you just 
want to get policy that I recommend. And when did they turn it on? Uh, end of September, I think. Like when, when it started getting cold, they turned it on automatically. You don't, you don't have to do nothing about it. It'll just come on. So it, that's really nice. There's no bureaucracy behind it. It'll just come on. Free. But like in September, you didn't suffer from cold. No, not at all. Like since when we came here, first time in September, we came in in uh, August actually, the end of August. August, September, and the weather was really good. Really good. I mean, 15 degrees, 25 degrees max, which is really nice. You can be on your t shirt, sweatshirt outside. Then the weather went down a bit, as it is now, but snowing and everything, and they turned it on. But could you live in this weather? Could I live in weather? I'm living now, that's an answer, but I guess I guess I could live in Sydney with this weather. I'm still getting accustomed to the, like, not the, the cold is not the biggest problem, the biggest problem is the lack of sunlight. Like, only having, I don't know, six hours, seven hours of sunlight per day, it's very different from what I'm used to. Like, the sun goes down at four in the afternoon, five in the afternoon. But, but still, yeah, it's a good city to live in. I don't like, what do you move here? Would I move here? Yeah. If I, I actually talked to some friends of mine about it, like, just jokingly, like, got, obviously that's a big meme like, about Gaspro. There, there are some, Gaspro does some talks at our university at GSA okay. from time to time, especially in an international business course. And, they, and my friends were like, hey, you'll stay there for I said, who knows? Obviously not because I don't speak Russian. That would be the biggest, the biggest, <laughs> the biggest. Uh, I don't know. I'm upset for that, but but I think it, it would be a nice city to live in. So can you please show us the like the classrooms? Yeah, basically there's this this main hall, and your classes will be one of the two floors, and there's classes all around, left, right. Mm -hmm. But this is basically it. We just. It goes a long way, both ways, but your classes would always be in this, in this corridor for sure. The coffee shop is there, so that's, that's basically all you have to know about the campus. And also there's the big auditorium across. Uh, so far we, I haven't had any class there. experience in a new country, I guess it's always not going to be that easy to start studying mm -hmm. in the sense of there's always something new to do, a new place to visit, a new, a new bar to, to go to, a new whatever activity it is. So in that sense, it's not the easiest to just be like, okay, today I'm not going to do any cultural stuff or meeting friends, I'm just going to study a bit. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, but I think that's not St. Petersburg, that's just exchange in general, you're always like, there's so many things to do, but I also have to study. Mm -hmm. But the university has a lot of uh, has a lot of group works mainly mm -hmm. that that you can take care of so easily. Like it, it's not that that hard to take care of. There's a lot of work to do, but it's not hard to do it. Mm -hmm. So you can take care of everything and have to still have the time to, to go 
go out and make fun of it. In that sense, it wasn't that much of a challenge. And do you have many Russian friends now? Or, or Russian friends. I think there's, I think the international, uh, international community is always going to be the strong community because I live with Dutch guys, we go out, we go out a lot with like, French people as well, there's a lot of French and other nationalities, of course. Of course, we're all in the same experience of experiencing a new culture and wanting to do new stuff that for us is really new. And maybe for someone Russian, it's just okay, I've been there 50 times now, so it's not that relevant for us, but we still have. A good number of Russian friends are willing to do stuff with us. Like some friends, actually, there's an international WhatsApp group with all the exchange students, and some Russians are there as well, just to try to see what the exchange students are all about to do with meetings as well. Enjoy this. And in general, do you think the idea of putting a campus so far away from the city center is a good idea? Or? I would say not. Uh, I we even have a course. Knowledge management, where we discuss like the, the good and the bad of the campus being here, and a lot of people just it's not that useful because like some teachers also teach in the master master building, which is in the center of the city. They have to travel like one hour, one hour something to get from the master building to here. So maybe that demotivates them a bit. Like if you want to take some doubts at the end of class, they have to go like one hour away to give a class. So can't really be there for you. So I think that. It's not that ideal for the campus to be here, but it's for students, it's, it's not that big of a toll. You just come here, go home, there's still time to do whatever you want. Mm. Do you like it here? Yes, I like it. I like, I like, like the campus. I like the campus. Like it has, it's not the biggest campus. Uh, like the Novus campus is really big, like the new yeah. one. Yeah, it's a really big campus, so I'm <laughs> getting, still getting used to it because it's new. It only opened two years ago, the new Nova campus. And the thing is, it's, it's massive. Here it's more concentrated. There's this hall behind us where you have all your classes and it will never vary from that. Just, but that's good because you just, you just know what to come and go. Your classes are either one class or the other class, one room or the other room, and, and you're basically done. And that's, that's good as well. You don't have to, 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 think about, to think a lot about how to get a class. Maybe we walk around a bit, like right up. Okay, are there any sports activities here? Uh, so basically, there's a there's a football tournament that GSM students organize, which is the GSM Football Cup, and we actually have an international team. We're currently top of the league, and hopefully we'll finish that way. And it's just, it was not, I mean, it was not meant to be just internationals. Like we excluded Russians. But I just asked in the international chat, uh, WhatsApp chat, hey guys, football tournament wants to come in and organize something. And we just you pay like a, a small fee per, per play for the whole season. And luckily we won't be able to make the playoffs because uh, it's in the second semester. But we cannot play all of the group stages and hopefully finish first of the group. That would be nice. How many teams are there? Uh, there's, I don't really know, but I think 10 teams in total. 8 to, oh. eight to 10 teams. Uh, uh, both students and former students can, can play, so some teams are alumni and I think teachers as well play, wow. so that's nice. That sounds huge. Yeah, it sounds, I, I, there are a lot of people watch the games actually, like more people, I, I think GSM has 1,000 students, if I'm correct, but usually the games have like 3,000 views or something, because they, 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 they yeah, because they, they broadcast the, the videos, the, the games online, mm -hmm. and usually have Way more views than GCMS students, so I don't know where those views come from. Maybe it's just VK, maybe it's just VK uh, mm. that has a lot of traction to football yeah, games live or something. I didn't see. But but yeah, a lot of people watch the games actually. Mm. The next one is this Saturday. This Saturday. Yes. And where is it? It's in a. a I'm not sure, but I'm not sure of the of the name of the station. Mm. But it's it's in a military facility that they rent to play in, and it's it's. Um, uh, Sorry for the, sorry for something. Uh, it's uh, it's covered football, so it's not in a in a grass pitch. It's mm. in, it's futsal. Mm. Oh, no, and any other kinds of sport? I, I mean, I only play football, so that's <laughs> all I know about. And uh, but I don't think there's that many offer outside of it. Mm -hmm. But for sure, there's some places in Saint Petersburg where you can practice whatever activities you want to. Uh, I know there's a Russian uh, a rugby team that was inviting students to go there. 
but they had several practices a week. I couldn't. Go, I, I was curious to trying it, but uh, there were there was too many practices for an exchange students, and so I, I never made it. Yeah. Try. But yeah, but I, I'm not sure about more sports activities other than for me. So summing up, like, what is the exchange in Russia like? Exchange in Russia is. I don't know, I'd like to say different, but I guess everybody would say it's, their exchange is it's different or special in some way. Uh, it's nice. Uh, I'd say it's, it's a good experience. And if you have that hardcore Russian experience, you would think of and the way everybody draws Russia as this cold country, cold heart people. And you can also have, like, you can, you can take, your, take those doubts out of yourself because you're going to see that's not the case at all. And you can also can also experience that a bit, which is, I don't know, it's, it's a Russian experience, I guess. So, <laughs> right. It's nice. Uh, okay, so maybe my last question would be then, um, what would you recommend in general? In general, uh, I think, I think for, for the Russia, uh, recommendations in general, I think, all the recommendations are going to be, going to be made to you by, the, by all the staff at Public Class. So your buddies are going to recommend a lot of stuff. And Katrina, the, the lady from GSUM, will also recommend a lot of things for you to do. In that sense, they are going to be a great help for you. But I also think the recommendations would be try to get an apartment. Uh, don't live with people from your own nationality. And I mean, for me, that was a... I, at first, I was actually thinking of living with Portuguese. I ended up living with Dutch guys, but I, and I think it's it's been it's been a really good experience because I'm experiencing new cultures at home as well, rather than the Russian culture. I'm seeing the Dutch culture, and there's a mix there. So it's really nice, and that way you can get a bit more out of your comfort zone. Like, don't just stick with the people from your country. It's an exchange experience, an international experience. So try to be the most the more international you can.